Welcome to the hottest movie review on the internet today, the A-List Review. I am your host, the Game Changer, Wes Troop. This week, I'm going to be taking a look at three new releases in theaters, The Wedding Ringer, American Sniper, and Paddington. And I'm also going to be taking a look at a movie released on DVD and Blu-ray this week, Jezebel. So without any further ado, let's get started with my review of the first comedy of this year, The Wedding Ringer. When a groom-to-be is desperate to find a best man and groomsmen, he's referred to a best man for hire, and both of them hope that the wedding can go off without a hitch. So what did I think of The Wedding Ringer? I thought it's an amusing comedy. We're given some of the usual wedding hijinks, such as a wild bachelor party, practicing dance moves, and dealing with annoying in-laws. Luckily, the fact that the groom doesn't really know his best man and the eclectic group of groomsmen really keep things fresh. There are quite a few belly laughs here, and I laughed out loud quite a few times. At its heart, we get some surprisingly sweet bromance moments as we wonder if the best man will break his rule of becoming friends with clients after the wedding. Kevin Hart leads the cast as Jimmy Callahan, the owner of Best Man Incorporated, who is hired to be an army priest best friend named Bick Mitchum. Hart can sometimes be hit and miss for me, but I really enjoyed him in this role. Josh Gag co-stars as Doug Harris, the groom who doesn't have a wedding party on his side and becomes desperate. Also in the cast, Kaylee Kowoko Sweeting as Gretchen, Doug's high-to-do fiancé, Affion Crockett, Jorge Garcia, and Colin Kane as some of the unusual groomsmen, the cute Olivia Thurlby as Allison, Gretchen's sister and maid of honor, and Mimi Rogers and Ken Howard as Gretchen's parents. The Wedding Ringer made me laugh more than I expected it to, and is quite fun for being the year's first comedy. I'm going to give it the rating of Do It. Yes, I know, some of you out there might be surprised, but I did enjoy this film. All right, now let's talk about a little film that was in limited release, but got expanded into wide release this week. This week it also got some big Oscar nominations, including Best Picture. Here are my thoughts on American Sniper. The true story of a war hero, Chris Kyle, who earned the reputation of the most lethal sniper in U.S. military history. So what did I think of American Sniper? I thought it's a compelling war drama. The film starts out with a highly tense opening of the sniper locking in on one of his tar first targets and were quickly taken back to his childhood hunting with his father and then wanting to become a cowboy. We then see him decide to train to be a Navy SEAL and meet an attractive girl at the bar who would later become his wife. After 9-11 hits, our hero is sent over to Iraq to protect his brothers. There are loads of brutal extended battle sequences that are well choreographed, showing the hell of war. Some of the scenes where Chris has his target locked in through his scope, debating if a child civilian is a threat, are some of the most suspenseful I've seen in years. Between his four tours, we also see Chris's home life with his wife and children and his trouble adjusting to a normal life. Bradley Cooper gives another terrific performance here as Chris Kyle, the real-life hero who had over 160 confirmed kills during his career. I was thrilled to see Cooper and the film earn some Oscar nominations. Sienna Miller does nice work here as well as Taya, Chris's wife who worries about him overseas and also when he's at home. Some of the most emotional scenes come toward the end of the film as Chris bonds with veterans and finally can be back with his family before the story meets its tragic ending. There have been many war-related films released as of late, and American Sniper is the best of the bunch. I'm going to give it the rating of A-List Approved. It gets the A-List seal of approval. So definitely check out American Sniper if you haven't yet. Also hitting theaters this week is the family film Paddington. There's been a lot of good buzz surrounding this movie, so let's see if I agree, shall we? A young bear 
Pierre from Peru travels to London to start a new life. He's taken in by the Brown family until he can find the explorer who visited his family many years before. So what did I think of Paddington? I thought it's a charming family comedy based on the classic books by Michael Bond. The character of Paddington is created with CGI, but he looks real and also incredibly cute. We see some of the Curious Bear's misadventures and learning human customs, including getting into some trouble in the bathroom, taking the subway, and eating at a restaurant. I like that the film sticks closely to the source material, but puts the beloved bear in a contemporary setting. The film is witty and has a fun sense of humor to it. There's also a few more emotional and sweet moments with a strong family message. The cast stars Hugh Bonneville as Henry Brown, the worrisome father of the family who's not exactly thrilled with their new house guest. Sally Hawkins as Mary, Henry's wife, who takes a liking to the bear and hopes to help him find what he's looking for. Madeline Harris as Judy, their teenage daughter who's easily embarrassed by her weird family. Samuel Jocelyn as Jonathan, the young son who bonds with Paddington. Julie Waters as Mrs. Bird, a relative of the family who lives with them. Ben Wishaw as the voice of Paddington, the small bear hoping to find a new family. Nicole Kidman as Millicent Clyde, an evil taxidermist interested in our furry friend. And the doctor himself, Peter Capaldi, as Mr. Curry, the nosy neighbor next door. Paddington is a clever film with a ton of heart and is an experience the whole family will enjoy. I'm going to give it the rating of Do It. So if you're looking for a family-friendly film to see this weekend at the theater, definitely check out Paddington. And finally, I'm going to review a film that just hit DVD and Blu-ray this week. It's a little less known film, but if you're passing the red box or added in your Netflix queue, you may come across this movie, so I'll tell you if it's worth renting, checking out, or not. This is my review of Jezebel. tragic car accident, a young woman goes to her father's house to recuperate. She ends up finding old video cassettes her mother made for her before she died, and things begin to get spooky. So what did I think of Jezebel? I thought it's a lifeless horror film. In what seems to be a pattern of uh, 2014 horror films, it's yet another scary movie that isn't scary. There's the usual jump moments, but none of them are effective. The film tries to pull out everything it can from the old horror 101 textbook. We get the dripping faucet, the static radio, and a literal bloodbath. Our heroine is also confound to a wheelchair until her therapy kicks in, so we know something is going to happen with that. Not just ghosts, but voodoo is thrown into the mix, and after Jesse discovers the tapes and tarot cards, supposed creepy events start to happen. As we unravel more secrets, the film gets worse, leaving us with a laughable finale. The cast stars Sarah Snook, who of course we talked about last week during my review of Predestination. Uh, she does do decent work here as Jessie, the young girl trying to find out unknown things about her past. Mark Webber as Preston, Jessie's high school friend who helps her out on her quest. David Andrews as Leon, Jessie's father who's worried about her snooping around. And Joelle Carter as Kate, Jessie's mom who dabbled in some voodoo. Jezebel has an interesting idea, but it just plays out with the same old song and dance we've seen hundreds of times before. I'm going to give it the rating of Suck It. Yes, first of the year. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. So if you're looking to rent something, uh, in my opinion, would not be Jezebel. But if you're in for some, you know, bad horror, be my guest. All right, well, that does it for this week. Three positive reviews and one negative review. Not bad, in my opinion. Uh, definitely check out American Sniper if you haven't yet. And for the kids, definitely Paddington. All right, so until next time, don't forget to subscribe to me right here on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Westside of 515. You can uh, follow me on Twitter, at Wes A-List. Thank you for those of you who followed my Golden Globe 
uh, live tweeting, and we know I'm going to be doing something for the Oscars. Probably another live tweeting extravaganza. You can like my Facebook page, facebook.com slash West Troop A-List, and you can follow me on Instagram, at West A-List. Uh, also, my book will be on the way soon. My 2014 movie review, review yearbook. I will hit you all up with details as I get more. Until next time, Troop out.